Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Gospel Forum Podcast. We are a collective of Reformation-minded Christians that care about doctrine and the local church. If you don't know anything about the Gospel Forum, please visit our website, thegospelforum.com. There you'll find the latest uh, blog articles and uh, podcast episodes. Make sure also to subscribe subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Well, my name is Dan Sardinas, and I'm joined here by my friends once again on the Gospel Forum. Let's start to my right. Who are you? My name is Micah. I'm one of the pastors at King's Cross Church here in Brainton. Yep, and I'm Sean. My, uh, I'm a pastor down at Bethel Mennonite Church in Sarasota. Awesome. And we have someone new today. Uh, we've told you about him before in the, <laughs> one of the last couple episodes, but now you get to see and meet him for the first time. He's one of the newest additions to the Gospel Forum. And who are you, my friend? My name is Aaron Anderson. I'm a associate pastor and elder at Crossroads Baptist Church in East Fort Myers, Florida. Um, been there for about uh, five years and actually was on staff with uh, one of your other members, Josh Sherrill, um, yeah. for uh, several years before that at uh, Providence Church. Uh, I've got a wonderful wife named Jacqueline, four uh, girls, so that's my life. Um, <laughs> working their way down from 14, 12, 10, and 8. So we're all wow. even numbers right now, and God's, awesome. God's, a, God's been uh, gracious to us. So. Awesome. Wow. Wonderful. Wonderful, brother. Well, great. Well, great to have you, and we're looking forward to see how the Lord uses you in this ministry. Uh, before we begin, let me also remind you that you could also find the Gospel Forum on a brand new streaming service called Boniface Media. Boniface Media is a streaming platform from Grace and Truth Press. Boniface is offering 50% off to the first 200 subscribers for the life of their subscription, unless the subscription is canceled or payment lapses. If you'd like to take advantage of this offer, uh, then head over to boniface.com and enter the codes alpha test or beta test to apply your 50% discount. And they're going to have such wonderful content, besides the gospel forum, but lots of other <laughs> solid, reformed documentaries and movies, podcasts. It's going to be uh, just a great collection of uh, spiritual enrichment for your family. They even, I just saw this morning, added the cessationist movie, uh, the Calvinist movie, and uh, other great movies like Spirit and Truth. So definitely wow. check it out. It's going to be filled with wonderful content. And like I said, the first 200 people get a lifetime 50% off discount. Uh, so that's great. Uh, I think the normal price is $9.99 a month. So for $5 a month, you could bless your family with a great spiritual uh, enrichment. So check them out wow. at Boniface Media. And like I said, find out the you can support us there by watching us there on Boniface Media. All right, guys. Well, let's head over to our main topic of the day. Wait, isn't there something you want to announce, Dan? Oh, oh yeah, that's right. yeah. Don't forget. <laughs> besides Boniface Media, yeah, yeah. before yeah, <laughs> there did we have another exciting announcement? Thank you for mentioning it to me. Um, so yes, um, we are going to be having uh, our conference, twenty twenty four conference, this Let's November. Go. Yep, November second. It will once again be held at Bethel Mennonite Church, and it'll be from nine a.m. to four p.m. It is open for families, just like it was last year. We had a, such a great time last year. Mm -hmm. What a blessing to have about two hundred or so people here, uh, worshiping and learning together with us. And Sean, tell us more about registration, the costs, and all those details. Yeah, so registration is open. Opened on June first. Uh, you can go to our website, thegospelforum.com. Right at the top of there, you'll see a link where you can click on and get registered. Uh, you want to do it soon because registration cost is $25 per person right now. That's our early bird rate. Um, those prices will go up in August. So um, between now and the end of July, $25 a person. Uh, if you're registering as a family, there's even a deeper discount than that. So you can go on and check there. And we brought lunch back. So the first year we had our conference, lunch was included. Last year we tried something a little different. Uh, it was okay. This year we're uh, bringing lunch back. So it's part of the cost of your registration. So you'll want to jump on there uh, and get that done soon. So we're looking forward to it. I can't wait to host again. It's a lot of fun. That's great. So. And you may have mentioned it, but there is a family discount. There is a family discount, yeah. Family um, discount. Basically, it's... Uh, practically free after a, after just a couple of people register right. uh, in your family. So, Good. yeah. So check that out. And Micah, tell us what the conference will be about. What is our theme and what can we look forward to learning about? Yes, it's, it's going to be very practical, very uh, helpful in our Christian life. The theme is trusting God. 
Uh, and then we're going to be looking at God's sovereignty and why we can trust him in different areas of our life. We're going to look, what are some of them? We're going to look at uh, God's sovereignty over creation, creation mm -hmm. over Satan, the, the demonic mm -hmm. world. Missions, evangelism. Suffering. Yeah. Suffering. Salvation in the cross. Yeah. Salvation yeah. in yes. the cross. Yep. Yeah. 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 So it's going to be, I think, very helpful for us, you know. Uh, as we go through different things in our lives, uh, God brings sometimes trials, suffering, mm -hmm. difficult situations. And then we start to ask the questions, well, where are you, Lord? Or why is this happening? Mm -hmm. And so we're going to, uh, hopefully, we're going to, to drive us all back to God's word and, and be able to grow together in our trust of him. Awesome. Praise God. Thanks, Micah. Yep. So, yes, and also with that theme, the Gospel Forum is writing another book to go with that theme of trusting God. Last year we wrote a book, a uh, collaborative effort called Pursuing Holiness. And so uh, check that out. You, if, you, if you want a copy of that, you could uh, look on our website, thegospelforum.com and place an order there. So we look forward to seeing you this Soon November. Soon you'll be able to place an order. Soon you'll be able to. <laughs> almost, it's almost ready to go. The book itself. No, the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, no, I'm talking about Pursuing Holiness. Oh, yeah, oh, well, yeah, holiness, that book, we have of course. It in stock. Yeah. We're almost sold out. We have you shirts. You might want to jump in We there. have shirts, we have merch, <laughs> so check out our website. <laughs> Trusting God, you'll have to wait for November 2nd yeah, to get right. your copy. But anyway, right. yes, all right. I think we can go to our main topic. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's yeah. do it. Let's, let's do go. All right, so our main topic of the day is living in a city of destruction. Mm. And this comes from uh, a, our theme of Pilgrim's Progress. Pilgrim's Progress is, of course, um, a wonderful book written by uh, John Bunyan. And John Bunyan, of course, being a nonconformist pastor uh, living in the 1600s, uh, would not bow the knee to the king, wanted to preach the gospel and pastor. Of course, he was, he was jailed for 12 years. And during that time, he wrote this wonderful story, which I believe, guys, besides the Bible, is the most printed or uh, the most sold Best book. Yeah. Best-selling, Best most translated, yeah. Yeah. all the above. <laughs> in, in history. So if you have never read The Pilgrim's Progress, why? Yeah. <laughs> Get to, to it. Uh, mm -hmm. There's versions in modern English, so if you struggle with some of that old English, that's no excuse there. Check it out. It will be such a wonderful help for your Christian life, as it's an allegory to describe um, the journey of a man named Christian from uh, salvation or really conviction all the way to uh, his death and, and going into glory. And just to jump in here too, there's actually the first way I was introduced to it as a child was uh, there's children's versions of it as yes, well. Same. If you want to give yeah. it to your kids, that really captivated my mind and imagination and drew my heart even closer mm -hmm. to the Lord, even as a even as a young boy. And then as I've grown. Uh, interacted with the actual one from the from the original writing, but yeah, very helpful. It's, and I think even just a year or two ago, there was a, a movie production, a theatrical, yes. Yes. An animated version. Yeah, of it was it, very well I, done. It yep. was well done. Yeah. I very, took my children to well it; they loved yep. it. So. Yeah. 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 Charles Spurgeon says this of about Pilgrim's Progress. He says, "Next to the Bible, the book that I value most is John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress. I believe I have read it read through it at least a hundred times. Wow! It is a volume of which I never seem to tire, and the secret of its freshness." is that it so largely is compiled from the scriptures. It is really biblical teaching put into form of a simple yet very striking allegory. Yeah. So check it out. Anyway, mm. the first part of the book begins with a man named Christian who lives in a city of destruction. And he finds a book. Mm -hmm. And what happens when he reads the book? It opens his eyes. <laughs> it does. He, he's enlightened. <laughs> yeah, he realizes. He realizes where he is living, mm -hmm. uh, and it sets him on a whole new path. That's right. Yeah. And where does he live? He the lives city, the city of destruction. City, yep. He lives yep. in a city mm -hmm. of destruction. So we want to, of course, not just give you an exposition of Pilgrim's Progress, but we want to make practical applications uh, to, from this allegory to our everyday life. So. Um, he was living in a place called destruction that was under God's judgment, under God's wrath, of course, like our world is. Mm -hmm. And this book told him to flee from the wrath to come, right? And so what can we draw from that uh, comparison of Christian? Here, here's an unsaved man who gets this warning to flee by reading the book to our world today. Mm -hmm. Well, I think in like ways, I mean, we live 
uh, in a city, a country, a nation, however you want to define that, but we live in a world uh, that's bound uh, for destruction. This is going to be destroyed one day. Uh, and we have a book, namely the Bible, uh, that reveals to us how to escape that impending doom that's coming. So um, I think, in, especially as you look around in the United States today, uh, we can see all types of sin, corruption. Um, as we were talking a little earlier before the podcast began, this is Pride Month uh, in, in the United States, so it's on full display right now, uh, the sin and corruption in the city allegorically, in which we live. Yeah, this world is, it just seems more and more. You know, one of my favorite things of all time, you guys know, we've even talked about it many times on the podcast, is is what, Micah? <laughs> what, 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 what is Your one of my for favorite the Yankees? What are Dan's uh, favorite yeah, what, things? What, what, the, the, uh, <laughs> what, what is it, Micah? Oh, man, uh, you're stumping me. <laughs> I think it's, it's love we, for the we, Yankees. We kind of no? shared in common, okay. too, yeah. a certain movie series. Oh, oh Star, Star Wars. Wars. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Shoot, so I thought Apple was in there. <laughs> well, yeah, you that's... never know what he's going to yeah. throw out there. Star Wars is by no means a Christian movie at all, but it, wow. it, I just love it. However, mm-hmm. just to show you where things have gone, there's a new series that is launching this week, yeah. uh, Star Wars, I called it last night. The Acolyte. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Acolyte... It's just drifted so far away from, first of all, uh, even like Star Wars fans, OG fans, just hate it. (laughs) But the creator, the creators of the Acolyte, for example, in recent weeks, have made such comments like this. It's the gayest Star Wars has ever been. Wow. Uh The gayest. And the woman who is the director of it is a lesbian. Mm -hmm. Um, She wrote it to make men mad, is what she said in an interview. And then the lead actress um, says that it's going to make white people angry. Mm. It's like, why? Mm. Like, just tell a good story. But all of this, of course, comes on the heels that our world is just continuing to drift further mm. away from God. Mm. Um, you know, there are, their hearts have already been far away from God. Sin has been tolerated for generations and, and decades and things that are now out in the open. Of course, we're never exposed in the, in the past. They've always been in the hidden recesses of our hearts. Mm. But here we see continual evidence of a world that hates God, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. That is doomed to face God's wrath. And something like Star Wars is just being so poisoned with all of this garbage. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. And one of the interesting things about the city of destruction, um, as well, when you read the story um, of Christian and his uh, finding of the book and becoming aware of his living in the city of destruction, and probably jumping a gun a little bit here, but discovering that he's got a burden on his back that he can't right. that he mm-hmm. can't shake. But uh, the interesting thing about that, as well, when you read it, the people who live in the city of destruction don't yes. realize that they live in the city of destruction. They think things are going good. They living. You know, to their uh, to their understanding, happy lives, wonderful lives, all the things, and they can't understand why Christian just can't get past what he's reading in this book and the realization that he comes that this city is doomed for destruction. And I think that's a practical um, point here in a lot of ways, even with the chaos that's going on in our country in several different fronts right now. Um, I think by and large, uh, for a long time, um, people in general have been lulled into complacency um, in the in the. Uh, just the wealth and the prosperity that we've been afforded mm-hmm. over the years. Um, and it's hard for them to see in a lot yeah. of ways that we, hey, we are uh, under the judgment of God um, and deservedly so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think even talking, I mean, we, we've, we've bounced around the idea, but the, the whole thing that this is a city of destruction. In other words, there's this impending doom that's coming. Well, how do we know that that's the case? Well, we know that because it's revealed in Scripture, right? Yes. So God tells us there is a day coming uh, when we have to give an account for our lives. And it could be uh, when we die, we'll face a, a, a judgment, but it could be when the Lord returns. But there is a day when everyone will have to stand before a holy and righteous judge and give account for his deeds. And like you just said, Aaron, there, there's a complacency. Most people either don't even know that that's the case or quite frankly don't care because they think life's good or you know i'm a pretty good person i've done all these good things and so there's not that sense of burden uh that's there hebrews 9 27 is far from most people's minds that it's appointed for a man once to die um, and then the judgment and we so often um, move through life without any kind of awareness even in christians to some degree Mm -hmm. um, we can fall Mm -hmm. into this as well where we just um 
follow after the course of um, the people around us and, and don't live under the, the reign of God, under the awareness of his presence right. and, and what's coming. Mm-hmm. Eat, drink, and be merry, yep. yeah. for tomorrow right. you die. Right. 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 There's, there's no fear of God. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, no fear of God. Mm-hmm. And that's the one thing that Christian realizes when he reads his book, mm-hmm. right? And he goes home and pleads with his family. And he says, Oh, my dear wife, said he, and you and the children of my bowels, I, your dear friend, am in myself undone by reason of a burden that lieth hard upon me. Moreover, I am for certain informed that this city will be burned with fire from heaven, in which fearful overthrow both myself with thee, my wife, and you, my sweet babes, shall miserably come to ruin, except that which yet I see not some way of escape can be found, whereby we may be delivered. Mm -hmm. And it was this news that burdened um, him so much so that he grew a burden mm-hmm. on his back, of course, yeah. which symbolizes his sin. Mm-hmm. You know, John Bunyan was so used by the Lord to really bring out all these parables just so perfectly in this allegorical setting. And so we can look to so many things. We can look to how the Word of God opens our eyes. We can look to how faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, Mm -hmm. right? We can look at even in Pilgrim's Progress where there is almost a suppression uh, to to read the word mm-hmm. or to find out the truth. Mm-hmm. No, no, you don't need to. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, why are you thinking about that? Why why are you following and and reading this old book that has mm-hmm. no relevancy towards t- to today? We see all of that right. Uh, happening right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. yeah. And there was, al- there was almost a, a disbelief or a, like a ridicule mm-hmm. uh, that Christian would ever want to leave this. And so yeah. there was this resistance. Don't don't leave. Like, well, <clears throat> what are you doing? What are you thinking? You know, and today, well, we read in Scripture, Jesus said, I came uh, not to bring peace, but to bring mm-hmm. a sword. And he's talking about that when people come to Christ, it divides. It uh, uh, yeah. And there are some people that will follow him, and there are some people that will hate those who follow Christ. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so even within families, uh, even within immediate families, uh, extended families, you see this division happening. And it happened to Christian um, because his wife and his children couldn't believe that he would follow this. Yeah, and that's a very, very real thing that we deal with. All of us have unsaved family members and Mm -hmm. friends Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. that we've pleaded with to to come to Christ and be saved. And of course, you know, I have family members in my my life, uh, some of them even just passed away in, in the recent years, that even pleaded with me not to be a pastor, not to waste my life. Mm. You know, I remember one of them calling me during my uh, time in uh, uh, college, Bible college, to plead with me, don't waste your life, study something else. Wow. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, it's like, <laughs> you yeah. know, they were just thinking, hey, you know, just do something where you can make a lot of money with your life mm-hmm. instead of giving it to your Lord and your religion, mm-hmm. you know, is, is what how they would they would put it. But this is something that even Jesus says, right? Mm -hmm. He says in Matthew 10, he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take out his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life shall lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Mm -hmm. And so Christian was willing to even leave family behind for this call of the king to come to safety because where he was living was about to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And so he feared God more than family. Mm -hmm. And family ties, as strong as they may be, uh, do not compare to the relationship that we have with the Lord. That's that's right. That's what he tells us. Look at at the blessing. Look at uh, the the difference and the eternality of a relationship Mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that can be tough. Uh, I was yeah. just talking to a friend recently, and uh, he, a uh, husband and wife, unbelievers, and the husband came to know the Lord. And now the difficulty in that marriage uh, that that brings about um, when one spouse is a believer and the other one is not mm-hmm. is very real. Um, and Christian faced that. He, he got that. And Pilgrim, or uh, yeah, uh, Bunyan did a good job of describing that for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In there. So. What is our responsibility then? Of course, Christian at this point, all he knows is he has a burden. All he knows is that he right. needs to be rescued. Um, of course, we all sit here as elders. We've been born again. We, we are saved. Um, and now, of course, we still live in this world mm-hmm. um, as we journey to the celestial city. What is our responsibility in living in a city of destruction? What, how can we encourage our listeners to, um, 
to understand their role as someone who has been um, uh, regenerated by the Holy Spirit um, and to warn others. Because that's the first thing he does is warn his family, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what is our responsibility to the world, not just our family and friends? Well, I, one of the things I was thinking of when uh, we were approaching this topic and uh, you sent us the, the idea of what does it look like to live under a city mm-hmm. of destruction. One of the first uh, sort of sections of scripture that came to my mind um, was uh, Daniel and his friends in mm-hmm. uh, living under Babylonian captivity, mm-hmm. that they were living under a season of God's judgment. Yeah. And uh, how, how did they function as people who feared uh, the Lord in that situation? And a couple of things that came to my mind were is that A, they feared God, right? Mm-hmm. They feared God more than man. Um, they continued to live by the book mm-hmm. um, and follow God's law and uh, live that out and practice publicly um, mm-hmm. wherever they went. And it, uh, it cost them, and uh, the Lord is uh, faithful in preserving, preserving them through that. But I think those are uh, important things to keep uh, in mind for us today, that we do fear God more than men, that he's given us a book, and that we trust and obey uh, mm-hmm. as we follow after, follow mm-hmm. after Christ. Yeah, I think that's so, so important. I was listening to a recent podcast about some pastors, I won't mention their names, but they were, of course, referencing the uh, Southern Baptist Convention that's going to be happening next week. And mm-hmm. of course, there's there's the SBC always has a much a big hoop, <laughs> big umbrella yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah. There's there's always a big to do something about the SBC every June. But of course, this year it's uh, passing the law amendment, and um, whether it, we're going to disfell whether they're going to disfellowship churches that uh, affirm, employ, or Ordain, think, ordain all, all the above, all the above <laughs> uh, of, of, of a to the pastor a, a woman of any kind mm-hmm. so um and of course what they were saying was well all the headlines of the news are going to be all the headlines of the news are going to be mm-hmm. the next day southern baptists hate women southern baptists do this southern baptists it's just like is that all you care about <laughs> it's like how this yeah. is going to look like to the world so you're going to yeah. vote against this just because it's going to make Southern Baptists look bad, mm. and it's it's that whole mantra I've heard before from the platform at the SBC. The well, world the wor- is watching. The world yeah. is watching. The world is watching. God is watching. Yeah. Yeah. Let us fear God yeah. and be faithful to His word. Yeah. And and the world's going to hate us anyway. And they if you will. cater to the world, uh, they're just going to keep moving the goalposts. Yeah. Yeah. And we see that repeatedly. Yeah. And yeah. if you cater to the world, what happens to becoming salt and light? Like exactly. what's what's the thing that makes us distinct and makes us um, conspicuous and makes. Mm makes uh, you know either the aroma of life to those who are called right. called by Christ or the aroma of death to those who realize they're under God's judgment. Any accolades that come from the world are going to be very temporary and mm-hmm. fleeting. I mean, you mm-hmm. just you just said that. You you can look at the United Methodist Church. Oh yeah, uh, just yeah. recently. This happened. Uh, and what they have done uh, to accept the LGBT agenda and lifestyle and thinking, and then right away they have a million. A million people. Million, what is it? A million it's members. Million. Members, yeah. yeah. A million members out of Africa leave. Ten percent. Ten percent of the entire United Methodist Church left in in an hour. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, unfortunately, they're going to go the way that all the other denominations have gone, who accept, uh, reject God's word, and accept the mm-hmm. the world. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's not going to add to their numbers. It's they're going to decrease and become irrelevant. Um, and that's really unfortunate mm-hmm. and sad. I think one of the things that we need to keep in mind, uh, and Aaron was talking about um, living truth, living out the Word of God. You know, um, I'm preaching through the book of Luke, and I was just impressed at the end of uh, chapter 13 uh, where they come to Jesus and they say, hey, Herod's going to kill you. Mm. Uh, and Jesus was fearless in the face of that. He said, go back and tell that fox. You know, And basically Jesus was saying, my job here is not done. And so until God calls me, to, or my mission is finished, I'll continue to preach and teach truth. So you see that fearlessness <clears throat> come out in Jesus. But then in the very next verses, you also see uh, this lament that he has for Jerusalem, that they rejected him. And um, and so I think as believers living in the city of destruction, uh, we're fearless, but we're not heartless. Mm-hmm. We're, we, we stand up for truth, 
And at the same time, we ask God to continue to give us a compassion for people who are just like uh, the Christian was. Uh, they're living in complacency and just literally don't know it. Right. Um, and so I think sometimes we can fall into either ditch. Uh, sometimes we can bemoan you know, how awful things are. And they are. They're getting bad. Uh, and lose that compassion for people. And then sometimes people fall in the ditch of, well, I just want to be so loving and so compassionate. They end up not telling truth. And Jesus kind of held those together. Absolutely. You know, perfectly. Yeah, and true compassion is telling someone yep. the truth. Yeah. Right? Because right. you can make someone very comfortable and make them feel at ease all the way to hell. Right. 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 And, and at, at the end, what kind of compassion is that? Right. There's right. no compassion at all. It's actually a form of hatred mm -hmm. to keep someone from the truth because you don't want to offend them. Well, we have to offend people. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean we're, we're called to be jerks. We're not called to be jerks, <laughs> but we're called no. to be ambassadors of the king to tell this world who is about to be destroyed that there is a way out. Right. And they don't have to be destroyed. Um, but they, there is safety. There is a haven there in a celestial city with the king. Um, so I think that's very important as well. And so I, I love what you brought up about being salt and light, being on the city, a, on the city on a hill. Um, you know, all those verses, letting our light so shine. Sometimes that comes across just by doing good works, of course. But also, but it, but it is not devoid of truth, of doctrine, of mm -hmm. appointing people to Christ, even in the midst of persecution and this is what christian endures his family mm. rejects him his neighbors uh call out for him and tell him that he's uh dumb <laughs> right yeah. right they're, they're saying he's a fool uh to leave the city for for this for what whatever his book had told him is true mm -hmm. and this is what we face every day we face on our way to the celestial city right we're all on this journey we're all in this pilgrim's progress on the way to heaven whenever the lord ordains for us to be there or whenever he's going to return. And we're going to have many people on the way ridicule us, um, uh, persecute us, if you will. Um, and we're not going to be very popular. And there's a, there's a choice to make. You know, either we will serve the king and love the people who are about to be destroyed, or we will just ignore them mm -hmm. and just blend in with everyone else. And I think, I think if we do so, that we're, we're doing a disservice uh, to, to God. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. And another aspect, and, and you're hitting on it, but another aspect in living in this uh, city of destruction, this kingdom, is remembering that this kingdom, this world, is not our home. Yes. Yep. And so right. we're looking forward to another city. We think of mm -hmm. Hebrews 11, uh, verse 10, talking about the patriarchs, those that have gone before in the Old Testament, the prophets, all of these who lived by faith, what were they looking forward to? Verse 10, for he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. Mm -hmm. And so they're looking forward uh, to God's, uh, the culmination of God's plan in creation to re reunite mm -hmm. us to himself, to restore that relationship and to be in the celestial city, mm -hmm. the kingdom uh, that is without end mm -hmm. in perfection. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. Can't wait. Yep. Yeah, and in essence, we, you know, in order to be in love with this world and lose track of where we're going, it's we, we become like a Demas, you know, like mm -hmm. Paul warns Timothy in 2 Timothy 4.10, for Demas, who Demas was one of Paul's uh, companions for, for mm -hmm. a season. Uh, he mentions him several times. For Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to, to, to Thessalonica. So, um, in love with this present world. In love yeah. with this present world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he lost sight of his journey, of mm -hmm. where he was going. Mm -hmm. And, of course, abandoned Paul. Of course, in Paul's, Paul's uh, in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. at that mm -hmm. point so yeah so as christian is leaving the city he, he encounters a man named evangelist mm -hmm. right so we we've talked a lot about of course how to live in a city of destruction speaking truth to people but here's this man evangelist someone want to speak to evangelist role in the story because he's the one that truly gives christian the hope that he needs mm -hmm. 
I think of, um, well, he's obviously Christian is struggling. He's going and talks about him walking through the fields, just undone by the scriptures, um, the ever increasing awareness of this burden, um, which we know to be sin on his back that is weighing him down and he realizes he needs to flee, but doesn't seem to know where to go yet. Mm-hmm. And so, um, again, one of the texts that came to my mind uh, was even Acts 8, where <clears throat> Philip meets with the Ethiopian eunuch. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ethiopian eunuch's reading God's word. He's struggling with it. doesn't quite understand it yet. And God sends him Philip. And he says, do you understand what you're reading? And Philip says, how can I unless mm-hmm. somebody explains that to me? And that doesn't mean that the word of God isn't clear in and of itself, but there is a necessity. And God mm-hmm. sends us out at the end of Matthew um, into all the world to make disciples, declaring the gospel. And that there is a, um, a necessity for God's people to um, lean into those places and to uh, also come alongside the scripture and point people um, to the way to go. And so what evangelist does is points him to uh, a yonder wicket gate to put him mm-hmm. on the path have to go to the celestial city mm-hmm. yeah yep. any comments about evangelist that's good no, i like it <laughs> <laughs> well it speaks it speaks a little bit to how much we need disciplers yep. and we need mm-hmm. to be we need to be discipled and then we are called to disciple others to train mm-hmm. and teach others yep. you mm-hmm. know uh and there can be a a, a little bit of a moniker, an idea that, oh, you don't really need anybody. You just need the Holy Spirit in the Bible. Right. And while a portion of that is true, that's not what God God's Word tells us. No, mm-hmm. God's Word tells us we need the church. Yep. Uh, we need mm-hmm. uh, solid believers uh, mm-hmm. to be in our mm-hmm. lives, whether whether they're friends or whether they're those that have come before and written mm-hmm. written about mm-hmm. God's Word in a solid way. So that just you know really really. Uh, tells us that we are not alone in this, mm-hmm. uh, we're not called to be alone, uh, right. and and for others to come alongside of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and also the availability of evangelists to come to Christian's aid, I think, is also important. Um, he says, um, but you know, Bunyan writes, Now I saw upon a time when he was walking in, his, in the fields that he was, as he wont, reading in his book, and greatly distressed in his mind, and as he read, he burst out, as he had done before, crying, What shall I do to be saved? Mm-hmm. I also saw that he looked this way and that way, as if he would run, yet he stood still, because as I perceived, he could not tell which way to go. Mm-hmm. I looked then and saw a man named Evangelist coming to him and asked, Wherefore dost thou cry? He answered, Sir, I perceive by the book in my hand that I am condemned to die, and after that to come to judgment. And I find that I am not willing to do the first, nor able to do the second. And then Evangelist lovingly, greets him with tidings of another and doth show him how to mount to that from this Mm. below. So evangelist sees his need and then points him to Mm. the way, Mm. right? And so um, I I, I just recently, I just, this occurred to me, um, you know, one of my family members was converted and within the last couple of years totally shocked me. it, it's you know he's a person who had heard the gospel before and then all of a sudden he starts texting me and messaging me and he watches our these episodes so you know hi <laughs> uh, and he he starts texting me and all of a sudden by these questions I begin to wonder something's going inside him mm-hmm. and he, he reminds me a lot of Christian in this way mm-hmm. that he knows that he's condemned to die he knows and he's struggling with works and all of a sudden he realizes that there's nothing he can do to be saved mm-hmm. and that it's all Christ mm-hmm. and so just being there ready to answer his questions, ready mm-hmm. to give the hope that lies within us, as Paul also says in the New Testament, um, I think is being ready. So we need to be ready when we're at work, at school, uh, to our neighborhood, our family members. We need to be ready to be evangelists, right? Mm-hmm. Those who are proclaiming the evangel to those who are knowing they're about to be destroyed. Um, and just give them the truth no matter what and point them in the way. And that's all evangelist does. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I would say it, it, sometimes at first glance it feels inconvenient. You know, people ask us questions or whatever. So to be an evangelist means um, it, it's not always on my schedule. In fact, it's never on my schedule. No. It's on God's <laughs> schedule. Um, but uh, just being available, you get the text messages, mm-hmm. you get the, mm-hmm. to take the time to meet people where they are. Um, that's, that's one of our roles in life, right? Yeah, so very good. Pictured beautifully in, uh, in Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, where he meets mm-hmm. him right mm-hmm. where he is, almost out of nowhere, it seems like, mm-hmm. and yep. re- recognizes his need and points him to the way. That's right. 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 And then here he encourages him to flee from the wrath to come. He gives him a parchment roll and um, shows him the way. And, of course, evangelists, 
to keep reading the story, it keeps popping up <laughs> whenever Pilgrim yep. or Christian falls off the way. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, he tells him to stay on the king's highway, and then repeatedly he kind of veers off, distracted by certain yep. events that happen in his life. But there's evangelist again, mm-hmm. get back on the way. And so, and I think that happens in the in in our Christian community, in our churches, mm-hmm. responsibility of accountability that we have towards one another. And so, anyway, that's we we all need evangelists in our life, yeah. not just to point us to Christ before we're saved, but to continually point us to Christ and the gospel after we're saved, mm-hmm. to keep us uh, on track and our eyes towards heaven. Yep. Yep. For sure. Very good. So, living in a city of destruction, we basically said. It's to be salt and light in this evil and wicked world. It's going to get worse and worse. Don't worry about being popular. Worry about speaking the truth. Mm-hmm. And the only way for people to know this burden is to give them the book. Yes. Yep. Give them the book and let them read what the book says. Tell them what the book says. Um, and then let the Holy Spirit convict them uh, and create that burden, which will be in our next episode uh, coming up soon. Well, guys, anything else to add to this conversation? This is good. I'm looking forward to the next ones as we walk walk our way through this book. This weekend. Great. Well, thanks for watching and listening to this episode of the Gospel Forum Podcast. Again, just a reminder, check out Boniface Media. Check us out on our YouTube and thegospelforum.com, especially for our conference details coming up in November. Well. This has been another episode of the Gospel Forum Podcast. And until next time, keep keep on on reforming. reforming.